Hello, my name is Andrew Woodfield and I'm the Course Master at Minnesota Opera. I'm here today to bring you all along in the process of preparing an opera course. The selection we've chosen for you today is the Brindisi from La Traviata, one of the most famous courses in the entire repertoire. We chose this selection in particular because next week on Thursday, April 30th, Minnesota Public Radio will be rebroadcasting our production of La Traviata. So with any luck, after this video today, you will be expert enough chorus singers to join along when we broadcast that performance. So let's get started. So the first thing we approach when we are starting with an opera chorus is the words. I've always found that we can't even begin with the notes till everyone is 100% comfortable with the language. That's true, especially in foreign languages, but also in English. So in this case, we are singing in Italian. Um, and I'd just like to explain a few things about the score that you all have received by now. And if you haven't received it, you can download it by following the link in the description of this video. So I mark my scores up a lot, so they're 100% clear to the chorus. Um, and some of the markings I do uh, pertain to the vowels. Now, in Italian, we have five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, with E and O either being open or closed. So we have open or closed vowels in English as well. For example, think about the word sec or sake. Sec and sake. Sec is open and sake is closed. That's true also for the uh, vowel O. You have boat and then you have bot. So I mark that in the score because it's not 100% clear if you're just reading the Italian and you pretty much have to look up each word. So to make it easier for the chorus, I mark it like this. This would be a closed O, like O, and this would be an open O, like A. So now that we know that, let's get started with the Italian. We're going to start on page 30. Ali piam amor fra cali ci più calti baciavra. That last word is baciavra, ciavra. You see a lot of vowels there, but we're just going to lie them to make it easier and clearer so that everybody can hear that. I'll do it once more a little slowly and you can uh, speak along if you like. Ali piam amor fra cali ci più calti baciavra. Great. Now let us jump to page 36, which is your next entrance. Actually, just before that, I suppose. Page 34. In questo, in questo paradiso ci scopra il nuovo di. Now, I hope you heard the difference between some of those open and closed vowels. For example, in just that last page on 37, we have scopra il nuovo. So sco is closed and nuo is open. Let's do that whole section again, starting on page 34. I'll go a little slower. In questo, in questo paradiso ci scopra il nuovo di. You got that? You may have noticed that I took a breath in between a word, which is generally not a good idea when you're singing in a solo mode. But when you're in a chorus, you can get away with those things. Those are some of the tricks of the trade that only that we know about. Anyway, so let's move on to the next section, which is on page 39. Now you'll notice that I've written in molto staccato. We'll approach the articulation later in this video, but I just want to get started with the idea that all of these notes should be very short and very crisp with the effervescence of champagne. Because remember, this is a party scene and we are painting that party scene with our voices as much as the scenery is painting and the action on stage. So let's get started. I'll go a little slower because this is a little longer. One and a two. Assi gotiamo, gotiamo, gotiamo la tazza e il canti con la notte a bella e il riso. Gotiamo, gotiamo, gotiamo in questo paradiso ne scopra, ne scopra il nuovo di. So that's it. And then it repeats after that. So I would definitely take a moment to go back in this video and familiarize yourself with the Italian. You'll find that once you have that in your articulators and in your muscle memory, the singing will be so much easier. 
Okay, so now that we've mastered the words, we can get to the notes. Um, so I'm going to start on the music. Your first entry is on page 30, but I'm going to start just before that on 29, so we get the lead in for your entrance. So here's a pro tip to singing in a chorus. The hardest thing is knowing when to begin and knowing where your entrance is. So you want to count like crazy and make sure that you're following along with the vocal line so that you can come in and just there can be an explosion of sound on page 30, which is what it needs to be. One thing I'll point out to you, though, is that on the second system and third measure of page 29, which is right here, it's going to slow up ever so slightly. So just watch for that because you might otherwise get behind if you weren't expecting that. So for our purposes today, I'm going to focus on the soprano one part, the tenor one part, and the bass part. There are other parts. There's a lower soprano part, a lower tenor part, but we're not going to get there. If you'd like and are more comfortable to sing those parts or you know them, feel free. But I'm just going to teach you those notes of the parts I just described. So now I'm going to play the accompaniment and we're going to start on page 29 where I've written the letter. I'm sorry, written the number one. Um, please forgive me for the quality of the accompaniment. It's coming out of my speakers. It was recorded by our head of music staff, the wonderful Alan Periello, um, and unfortunately he couldn't be with me today to record it in person for obvious reasons. So again, page 29, rehearsal one. And I will start with the soprano and the tenor part because they're in unison. One, go. Ali piam amor fra cali, ci più caldi baciavra. Great, pretty straightforward. Let's try it now with the bass part. Everyone got that? You can go back and practice uh, as you like, but we're going to move on to the next section, which is on page 34. So again, uh, we're going to lead into it from where I've written the number two on page 33. And in this instance, it's all in unison, so I only have to record it for you once. Everybody sings the same notes. Makes it a little easy for us. Two, one, go. Ah, go, Okay, and then they sing uh, for about 30 seconds more, and then we all come in and we're in our individual parts in which sopranos, tenors, and basses all have individual lines. So I'm going to go back to where we just began, and then I'm going to continue this time with the soprano line. Starting on page 33 from Rehearsal 2. Soprano sings La vita nel tribudio tenor Quando non sa mi ancora Noi diti a chi l'ignora E il mio destin così Here it comes Asi godiamo, godiamo, godiamo La tazza e il cantico La nota bella e il riso Godiamo, godiamo, godiamo In questo paradiso Ne scopra, ne scopra Il nuovo di, ne sopra Il nuovo, nuovo di, ne scopra Il nuovo, nuovo di Si, ne scopra, ne scopra Il nuovo di 
So we hold that last bar for four measures. Okay, let's go back and let's now try that from the same place. I believe it was page 33 and we'll do the tenor part. Two, one, go. Ah, go diam, la tazza, la tazza, il cantico, la note a bella il riso. In questo, in questo paradiso ci scopra il luogo di soprano. La vita nel tripudio tenor, quando non sa mi ancora. Soprano, dita chi l'ignora. Mio destin così. Here we go. Asi cotiamo, cotiamo, cotiamo la tazza e il cantico, la nota bella e il riso. Cotiamo, cotiamo, cotiamo in que sto parla di so. Ci scopra, ci scopra il nuovo di ne scopra, no, po, no, po, di ne scopra, no, po, no, po, di si ne scopra, ne scopra il nuovo di. So I made a little bit of mistake. I said ci scopra instead of ne scopra. It's because prior to that, we do have ci scopra. Those little differences in opera just drive everybody crazy and it takes us a million years to remember them. And then of course we forget them if you give us five minutes away from the piece. So forgive me for that. But we will go back and do the bass part now and hopefully I can redeem myself. So this is the bass part starting on page 33. La tazza il cantico, la nota bella il riso. In questo, in questo paradiso ci scopra il nuovo di soprano. Vita nel tribudio, quando non sa mi ancora, non dite a chi l'ignora, è il mio destin così. Asi cotiamo, cotiamo, cotiamo la tazza e il cantico, la notte appella e il riso. Cotiamo, cotiamo, cotiamo in questo paradiso. Ci scopra, ne scopra il nuovo voti. Ne scopra, no, bono, voti. Ne scopra, no, bono, voti. Si ne scopra, ne scopra il nuovo voti. Okay, so I did it once. I did do ci scopra instead of ne scopra. But hopefully you will do as I say and not as I do. That is one of the wonderful aspects of being the chorus master. At any rate, uh, we will now move on to some of the more musical details. Step three of this process is dynamics, articulation, nuance, and intention. Now this is my favorite part of the whole process of preparing a chorus. Teaching people notes and teaching people rhythms is boring, in my opinion. This is where we elevate the notes and the rhythms and we create music and we create an atmosphere that enhances the story that we're trying to tell on stage. So I could go on and talk about this chorus for hours and hours and hours, but obviously I'm not going to do that right now. But there are a few details I want to show you that I think we should bring out. So if you would, please turn to page 30. Now, if we look at page 30, we see um, a bunch of articulation markings on the page. The ones that are of most interest to me are the downbeat, or the first measure of page 30, we have an accent on ah. Then if you look at the third and the fourth measure, we have these two little dots on biam and on mor. So we want that accent on the, on the first measure of page 30 to be an explosion of energy and then by contrast, we want those two little dots to be the most delicate notes you've ever sung in your life. If we do that, that will make this passage come to life. Let me just speak it for you so you can hear what I mean. Just like that. And of course, the same applies to when we have it come back uh, the second time 
in the last measure of page 30 and on the second and third measure of page 31. So let's go ahead and practice it with just the idea of bringing that articulation out. I will sing the tenor part because that's what I'm used to, but you should go ahead and sing whichever part is comfortable for you. Again, we're starting on rehearsal one on page 29. Great. Now, it's truly magical when you can get 40 people on stage to unify behind that one musical idea. And that's what really elevates a chorus to um, excellence. So the next thing I'd like to point out to you is on page 34. It's our second entrance. So there are a few details that I think are very important. For starters, on the downbeat, we have this great crescendo that leads into the section. I really want to bring that out and then full lusty mezzo forte and by measure uh, three of that page on page 34. Now we have a wonderful contrast on page 35 where it goes to pianissimo. And I've actually circled that because that's very important to me and I want the chorus to really bring that out. Um, the great thing about this section is that you get this wonderful crescendo that revs us into this energy and then this instant change of color. Now, if we were instrumentalists, we would think about these markings about dynamics in terms of volume. But as singers, we really want to think of them in terms of color. So I think about more coloring my voice as opposed to actually changing the volume. And also, when we're on an opera stage, we can't really adjust the volume because, to be honest with you, everything has to be loud. We're singing to thousands of people. We got a 60-piece orchestra underneath us, and there's not a ton of room for subtlety when it comes to volume but there's a lot we can do with articulation and color. So let me just sing it for you exactly what I mean. Want a strong crescendo, and I want that opening crescendo of page 34 to just rev us into this lusty and almost um, orgiastic sense of having of this party that we are in. Starting rehearsal two on page 33. And again, I will go ahead and sing the tenor part because it's the one I know. So did you hear how I did it more with color? So in the opening loud part, I thought more snarly, right here. Godiamo la tazza, la tazza, il cantico. And then when we pulled it back, la nota bella il riso. That is a very common color that you'll find in Italian opera. And when I'm explaining it to choruses who might not be familiar with it, I like to think of boogie, boogie, boogie. That's the kind of vocal quality that we're after. It's interesting when we are making music as choral singers, we're not always after the prettiest sound that your voice teacher would love. We are after a color that when unified with everybody in the group will really be magical. Anyway, so those are just a few of the details. And of course, we don't want to forget the molto staccato on page 39 that we already talked about when we went over the text. But those are just a few of my favorite details that I think really bring this piece to life. So now that we are masters at the Brindisi from La Traviata, let's listen to a selection taken from last year's production and by all means, go ahead and sing along. Thanks so much. <laughs> Amore, amore, amore. 